It's race week. Hope everyone is doing fine. We are going to get into different team news and incidents that got my blood boiling relating to the last race in Monza. First of all, what are these brainless papaya rules? Lando had a rear opportunity to take boatloads of points off for Stappen in the championship fight, and everything was thrown out of the window by the indifference of the team. I'm starting to believe Zach Brown and Andrea Stella don't have what it takes to be champions. If we look at other team principals, they would have made a decision much earlier to prioritize Lando Norris, because his second in the championship and Verstappen is struggling to even finish in the top five now. McLaren his weekend was all destroyed by that aggressive overtake piastri made on Norris, which nearly could have ended in a spin for Lando. An easy win and a 1-2 finish ended in a 2-3 finish with a sad Lando, because the management of the team is so average it makes me sick. Team orders have been in F1 from the beginning of the sport. Michael Schumacher, Lewis Hamilton, Max Verstappen, Sebastian Vettel have all benefited from team orders. McLaren think they can win championships without team orders. To that I say continue leaving in a simulation. Red Bull winning again will be in Austin, according to Helmut Marco. Red Bull reckons by then they will have resolved their car balance issues that have plagued all the teams except McLaren this season. Each team has experienced a near identical scenario of delivering a car upgrade that brings with it extra downforce but with it the side effect of an altered car, making handling feel worse from the cockpit. Car balance issues are complex. This issue has been in F1 for the last two decades, but was mitigated by the front wing and rear wing, providing more downforce balancing the car. But since the ground effect rules were introduced, the front and rear wing now play a small role in provision of overall downforce. 70% of the downforce comes from the floor compared to 2021. With the previous regulation, the load was divided approximately one third to the front wing, one-third to the floor, and finally, one-third to the rear wing. So, the wings had more relevance in modifying the balance, compared to today's cars that generate up to 70% of the downforce with the floor. The ability to intervene with the front wing to find a balance has effectively halved. Whereas in the past, teams could utilize front wing designs more to help balance the car. In fact, the more aggressive use of flexi wings is a consequence of these car balance problems because teams have realized that one of the best ways to overcome low-speed understeer and high-speed oversteer is to have a wing that exploits aero elasticity. In varying the wing's characteristics, it can help deliver that extra bite in slow speed and flexes down in the high-speed stuff that knocks off some of the risks of it putting too much load on the nose. Without the ability to flex the front wings, teams would face an even tougher time dealing with the car balance problems. Christian Horner has suggested Red Bulls decline this season may be down to the team overdeveloping its RB20. According to Horner, there's a balance issue with the car that isn't allowing the drivers to commit to corner entry. He said, so as soon as you calm down the rear, you do that by compromising the front. So then you end up with understeer, and then you kill your tire that way. Horner thinks what they really need to do is get the map. Or if they look at the McLaren, it almost looks like an evolution of last year's car, a much simpler car than theirs. Perhaps they've gone a little too complex, and perhaps they need to simplify a few things. Red Bull has introduced more upgrades than other teams. Two weeks after the Miami Grand Prix, a new front wing, nose and floor made their debut in Imola, while circuit-specific updates were introduced for the races in Monaco and Canada. A new floor debuted both in Spain, along with new side pods and Great Britain, before a new front wing was introduced in Hungary and again in Italy last week, along with a brand new rear wing. None of the changes have helped Red Bull rediscover its early season form, much to Verstappen's frustration. Azerbaijan Grand Prix this weekend, 51 laps at the street circuit, which features many unique characteristics. At 2,200 meters, the start-finish straight at the Baku City Circuit is by far the longest on the calendar, around twice as long as the Kemmel Strait at the Belgian GP and the main straight at the Italian GP. The Baku Strait offers a great slipstream for cars to set up overtakes with, combined with DRS into turn one, and puts an interesting demand on F1 teams to balance downforce against straight-line speed, particularly rewarding teams with good mechanical grip. Like and subscribe. Thank you so much for tuning in.